distinct honor to welcome you all to the Nottingham International Model United Nations 2013, our sixth edition. I want to start by thanking you all. Starting by my secretariat, who's uh, put up with me for about eight months now, uh, and have managed to both moderate and keep me from my worst impulses regarding this conference. We, I could not have done it without you guys, so thank you so much. We'd like to thank. I'd like to thank the chairs. It's a team of Molly and an all stars, and I'm very thankful to have them around here. We've got people from um, all the way from Africa, the Middle East, Europe, and China. I'm quite proud of my cherry team, with you guys. I'd like to thank the delegates delegates who uh, come from all over the UK and Europe to attend this conference. It's quite humbling, in fact, to see somebody travel this far just for something that I set up uh, with uh, some of my uni mates. Um, uh, but most of all, I'd like to thank my parents, my father, your president, uh, Michael Guru. It's uh, stuck with me through thick and thin, where lesser men would have uh, let go of prodigal sons. Um, so, Model UN, my first one, they told me uh, that the resolutions that we passed would be sent to the General Assembly and considered by the, uh, by the floor. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, I was a bit keen back then, believing that kind of thing. But uh, I haven't gone more than two years ever since without doing one because it really is something that I firmly believe in as a force of good in the world. And as Mr. C uh, explained, it has served as a glue for the international system, for the post-war peace that was fought for, fought for by the greatest generation during World War II, and held together by the service of men like Mr. C from the baby boom generation. The men who took down the Soviet Empire, fought for democracy, all over the world. As a citizen of a country, the Dominican Republic, who was intervened, invaded twice by the United States, I have to say, I do agree with his uh, assessment that uh, the United States as a hegemon is uh, quite well behaved. Um, but I do have to say, in the past 15 years or so, the West has gone back, it has moved away from democratization, it has moved towards militarization. And if we, the generation who will carry the torch after them, the generation who have to pick up the baton and ensure that the post-war peace lives <coughs> on for another 50, 100 years, if we are to succeed in that endeavor, we will have to roll back some of these policies. Spying on your own population, invading without UN Security Council mandates, striking <coughs> countries that you're not at war with from the sky, from the sat you know. This is all, f 15 years ago you would have said this, and the amount of people who would have pulled up, you know, thrown the book at you, international law. And we do it, you know, completely devoid of any sense of responsibility for the international system that was put together by men far wiser than any of us. Now, I, what I want to use this address of the Secretary General for is to call on all of you to try and get involved, not just in the particular causes that we succeed outlined, like nuclear deterrence and nuclear disarmament, <coughs> But the nitty gritty issues, the post 15 development agenda, the humanitarian uh, concerns, and most of all, maintaining the peace. We live in what has been called by commentators far and wider than I the most peaceful time in the history of humanity. How much of a shame would it be to have to stop on our watch? This is our mission, ladies and gentlemen. 
This is what we need to avoid. We need to avoid the outbreak of further conflict, not just in the Middle East or in South Asia, but all over the world, where fault lines are constantly cropping up. The reason why the greatest generation and the baby boomers were so successful in maintaining world peace, you know, give or take, but making, uh, making sure that we got to where we are now. The reason they did that is because they were constantly <coughs> engaged in seeing where the conflicts would emerge and dealing with them before they did. <coughs> the fault lines we see right now, the, the battle lines being drawn, Sunni and Shia in the Middle East, uh, India, Pakistan, China, Uyghur Stan, Inner Mongolia, all these places can be dealt with before anything happens. And so, ladies and gentlemen, in the spirit of service that Mr. C so graciously exposed to us, it is my distinct honor as Secretary General of this conference to declare the session, sixth session open.